It is actually happening. Vario enters the VR consumer market. The Vario Aero is the company's first ever VR headset that is not strictly aimed at enterprise customers, but instead intends to conquer the high-end VR consumer market. And they might actually succeed. The Vario Aero is based on the company's high-end flagship headset for business customers, the VR3. Vario kept everything that worked well for gaming, like the impressive visuals achieved by non-glare aspheric lenses and high-resolution panels, and stripped the headset off everything that was actually not really needed for a consumer device, like the hand tracking and the human resolution focus displays. The latter could not be powered by our current-gen consumer GPUs anyways. Vario did keep eye tracking and automatic IPD adjustment though and actually made the device lighter and therefore much more comfortable than its business counterpart. With an asking price of 2000 euros and dollars excluding taxes, the Vario Aero is clearly targeted at the high-end VR enthusiast market. This target audience will for sure appreciate that with the Aero there also won't be a yearly fee anymore, which is still the case for the Vario business headsets. The big question that VR enthusiasts of course now ask, is this device as good as the VR3? The answer is no, it is actually better. In this review we're going to find out why that is the case and if you should upgrade. So absolutely stay tuned, watch the whole video because all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back again here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang, and if you are excited about virtual reality, you should absolutely subscribe to this channel here and click on the bell button because I'm bringing you the latest VR hardware reviews, just like this one here about the Vario Aero. But without further ado, let's directly get into the review and let's start with the basics. Build quality and comfort. The build quality and materials used are top notch. The Aero is a well-built high-end device that feels just as premium as the VR3. That does not come as a surprise though, since both headsets use exactly the same casing that even features woven fabric parts instead of an all-plastic enclosure like most of the competition. From the outside, you can still distinguish the two headsets though, because the Aero only needs one cable, whereas the VR3 still needed two of them. That also means Instead of two DP ports and two USB ports like with the VR3, now only one DP port and a single USB port are needed to connect the Aero to a gaming PC. Of course, a single cable also benefits comfort and ease of use. Comfort is an especially important aspect here since the Aero is clearly aimed at the high-end simmer community and users that want to wear the device for hours and hours at a time. The VR3 did a good job with comfort, but the weight was without a doubt the limiting factor. Even though the balancing was good, you could still tell that you are wearing quite a heavy device. The Aero is much lighter than the VR3. Because there is no more hand tracking and no more focus displays, the device is now 300 grams lighter and weighs only around 500 grams. Since the halo strap is still the same and does a great job at balancing the headset, the Aero is a very comfortable device to wear, also for long playing sessions. The halo style head strap allows for very precise three point adjustment. Users can adjust size at the back, like most headsets, at the front part that sits on the user's forehead and there's even an angle adjustment at the sides that allows the headset to perfectly fit the user's face. I had not yet come across a head strap that would allow for so many adjustments. Once you understand what you can do with it, you will be able to find the right fit. But it does take quite a bit longer to find that perfect fit than it does with other head straps. It is just not as simple and straightforward. Moreover, I'm missing the functionality of being able to tilt the whole head strap up like with the Reverb G2. I have quite a big head. And at the very beginning, it was kind of hard for me to actually get into the device because of this missing feature. People with even bigger heads might have even more problems and need to make sure that the head strap can work for their head size at all. For the next generation of Vario head straps, there is without a doubt room for improvements, especially for larger head sizes. Visuals now we get to the major selling point of the Vario Aero, the visuals. These are the best visuals I've ever seen in a VR headset, period. 
virtual worlds even look better than in the VR 3, and that is quite a feat. When I first looked through the Vario VR 3 a month ago, I was extremely excited because virtual worlds simply looked photorealistic and it's the same with the Arrow. Exploring Half-Life Alyx with the Arrow is simply a game changer. Never before could you experience that living and breathing world more immersive than with the Arrow. The same is true for sims like Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is so close to the real thing that you might completely forget about the real world outside of the Arrow. Visuals are absolutely amazing. And this time around, the displays are even noticeably brighter than they were in the VR3. Visuals in VR are highly dependent on displays and lenses. For the Arrow, we simply have a winning combination of both. Let's have a closer look. Lenses. The Vario Arrow uses the same custom-made aspheric lenses as seen in the VR3. Aspheric lenses are those clear lenses that completely lack the concentric rings that Fresnel lenses are known for. Because of that, you will absolutely not be distracted by god rays that headsets like the Valve Index are plagued with. It's beautiful and such a huge difference. You can completely get immersed in the virtual worlds and there is nothing that would distract you from that. The aspheric lenses also make a difference as far as sweet spot and edge-to-edge -edge clarity are concerned. Not once did I have to adjust the headset's position in order to find the sweet spot where everything looks clear. You will always find it directly when putting on the arrow. Also, the edge-to-edge -edge clarity is better than in competing Fresnel lens headsets, meaning that you have a clear image not only in the center of the display, but also when you look around within the headset. Does it have the perfect edge-to-edge -edge clarity? No, but image quality does not decrease as fast as with Fresnel lenses in the peripheral areas. However, the further you get to the edges, the more of chromatic aberration you will see here as well, but again, compared to Fresnel, this is so much better in so many ways. Another factor that contributes to the lenses being able to do such a fantastic job is that they are always correctly aligned to the user's eyes thanks to automatic IPD adjustment. It is pretty incredible that Vario kept the eye tracking functionality in the aerial. When you put on the device, you have to focus on a little dot and then your IPD gets measured. The lenses are then moved into the perfect position by the built-in motors. It is nothing short of spectacular and the optics are just perfectly in place every single time. Aspheric lenses do not only have advantages though. They introduce optical distortions and that is actually the reason why most VR headsets now use Fresnel lenses. When I first reviewed the VR3, these optical distortions were quite visible. When I was looking up and down, there was quite a bit of barrel distortion, like a bulge moving through the picture and also in the peripheral area, there was quite a bit of warping, as in the image moving faster towards the peripheral areas as compared to other parts of the picture. And that is exactly what I was expecting when I first turned on the arrow. But I can tell you that these problems were so dramatically improved that I don't think that normal users would actually see them in the first place. And that is extremely important because like this, arrow owners can actually enjoy the breathtaking visuals without any distractions. How did they do it? Vario has improved the so-called lens distortion profile, which is an important part of a software solution that pre-distorts the image before it travels through the lenses into the user's eyes. It is still not as perfect as a Valve Index, but again, most people will not notice but just enjoy the perfect clarity of the lenses. Displays. The other part of the equation are the two displays that are being used. We're talking about two mini LED LCD 90Hz panels with a resolution of 2880 by 2720 pixels per eye. Just to get an idea about how high of a resolution that actually is, the Reverb G2, which stunned us with its fantastic visuals last year, only has a resolution of 2160 by 2160 pixels and the Valve Index would only give us 1400 by 1600 pixels per eye. And in conjunction with the aspheric lenses we talked about, those high resolution displays just shine. And you could take that quite literally. In direct comparison with the VR3, the arrow looks brighter and colors even look a tad better than on the Big Brother. 
But how could that actually be the case when they are using exactly the same displays? Well, the answer lies in the missing focus displays. As mentioned before, the VR3 even sports additional human eye resolution focus displays that are projected into the middle of the standard displays. In order not to see color differences between those displays, color adjustments had to be made on both panels, not allowing to unleash the full potential of either display as far as colors are concerned. The lowest common denominator had to be found and that compromise is now not needed anymore with the arrow. That is also the reason why the arrow is now double as bright as the VR3 and the XR3. Colors are incredibly vibrant, just like an OLED panel. It is actually surprising to see just how good colors look like on this panel. Contrasts are incredibly high, which allows for bright and shiny colors, also on dark backgrounds with very good black levels. And yes, you heard that right just now. These are mini LED LCD panels. The same display technology as used in the big iPad Pro and in the new MacBook Pro displays. That means that there is not just one big backlight that is turned on all the time, like with the standard LCD panels, making blacks more of a gray, but that certain zones can be lit whenever needed and others simply turned off when deep blacks should be shown. Now currently, the technology is actually not used to its full potential. And that is probably also why Vario did not advertise this feature for the VR3. Right now, backlight zones are turned on and off in rows like a rolling shutter to improve latency by 5 milliseconds. That is for sure a nice feature, but it gets really exciting once dark areas will actually be dimmed to give us OLED-like blacks. Right now, blacks are as good as the best LCD panels on the market, but this headset even has so much more potential down the line and I'm excited about that future upgrade. FOV. The FOV of the Arrow is a bit wider than the standard FOV that you're used to when coming from an Oculus headset or the Reverb G2, for example. Vario says that it's 150 degrees horizontal, and while that may be theoretically correct, in my practical measurements using the ROV test environment, I got to 100 degrees horizontal and 76 degrees vertical. If you are used to bigger FOVs like the ones provided by the Pimax headsets or even by the Pro 2 though, you will not be impressed by the FOV of the Aero. Chances are high though that the sheer visual quality that the Aero offers will simply draw all of your attention and will make for a wonderful immersion. That was the case for me and I'm pretty sure many of you will feel the same. You just have to check out those visuals for yourself. In a nutshell, the FOV is alright, but nothing to write home about. If for you it's all about the FOV and if you want the widest FOV that's available on the market, go for the Pimax headsets. However, if for you it's all about visuals and if you want the best visuals that are on the market right now with incredible clarity and colors, the best sweet spot and no god rays at all, it's the Aero. Audio. Just as the VR3, the Aero does not come with a built-in audio solution like we're used to from competing headsets. Unlike the VR3, Vario does add in-ear headphones into the box though, which also include a microphone. This is a serviceable solution that works, but without a doubt, I would have preferred built-in headphones. The in-ear headphones do sound good though, and once you put them into your ears, you will most likely not think about them anymore. They offer a good enough sound throughout the audio spectrum and are without a doubt not just some cheap plastic in-ears that you will find with many smartphones these days. They directly plug into the 3.5mm headphones jack that the Aero offers. So should you not like that audio solution, you can of course go with your own high-end headphones. Vario tells me that this is what enterprise customers actually prefer. Well. The consumer market is without a doubt very different here and for the next Aero installment for sure we will need a better audio solution. Microphone. The microphone is part of the in-ear headphones, so the Aero comes with a 3.5mm audio plus mic combined jack. The microphone sounds alright, but certainly nowhere near as good as the one of the Valve Index. Again, audio is not the strong suit of the Aero, it is all about the visuals. Controllers and tracking. The Aero is fully compatible with the Valve Lighthouse tracking system. In order to use the Aero, 
you will need the Lighthouse base stations and compatible controllers like for example the Valve Index controllers or the Vive Wands. Lighthouse tracking is still the best tracking that is available to consumers and VR enthusiasts will likely already own a set of compatible controllers and base stations. Should that not be the case, controllers and base stations still need to be purchased for around $600. That's for the Valve Index controllers and two Lighthouse base stations that are actually hard to come by. Performance and compatibility. Will you be able to run the arrow on your system? Understand, that is the question that's on your mind right now. The answer is, if you are a VR enthusiast that is already invested in one of the top tier headsets like the Reverb G2 or the Vive Pro 2, most likely yes. Just to remind you, the Pro 2 has a resolution of around 2.5K by 2.5K per eye, so nearly as high as the Arrow, and the Pro 2 runs well on most systems. The minimum system requirements are an RDX 2080 or RDX 3070. I personally ran the Arrow on a 3080 without any performance problems playing standard Steam VR games like Half-Life Alyx, Skyrim, Boneworks, DCS and also Microsoft Flight Simulator. Unfortunately, only NVIDIA GPUs are supported, so if your system runs on an AMD GPU, you will either need to get a new GPU or simply sit this one out. On my system, I reach an OpenVR benchmark score of 30 FPS. With the Reverb G2 as direct comparison, I got a 28 FPS, so a very comparable result. Of course, this score will always depend on the render resolution and for this test we went for the Steam VR super sampling at 100% just as the benchmark tool would require from us. If you got a 3080 as well, you could run the OpenVR benchmark with your current headset to find out how much better or worse the arrow would run on your system. As far as compatibility is concerned, I had absolutely no problems at all running all of my Steam VR library. Everything simply ran without any problems at all. I'm using the Arrow with Valve Index controllers and also on that front everything just worked as expected. Just as the OpenVR benchmark results suggested, I got similar FPS on the Arrow and the Reverb G2. The Arrow does not run as a pure Steam VR headset. Just like with the Pimax headset or the Vive Pro 2, you need to install another piece of software. This software is called Vario Base and allows you to fine-tune your VR experience. You can set the visual fidelity, enable or disable OpenXR, OpenVR compatibility, enable or disable automatic IPD adjustment and many more things. The software feels mature and powerful and would probably deserve a whole video by itself. Conclusion If you are simply looking for the best visuals in VR right now, the Arrow is your next headset. Is a new king of clarity and takes the rain from the Reverb G2, especially thanks to the phenomenal lenses that make God Rays a thing of the past. Virtual worlds look as good as they've never looked before. I would even use the term photorealistic if textures can hold up. Looking at objects in the arrow is comparable to looking at the pages of a glossy magazine. There is absolutely no chance anymore to see any kind of screen door effect, even if you try hard to find it. Colors also can live up to the glossy magazine comparison and the potential of true blacks thanks to the mini LED technology is only a software update away. Visuals are so compelling because of the combination of fantastic panels and custom made aspheric lenses. The choice of lenses can make or break visuals of a VR headset and with the arrow, Vario shows that they absolutely understand the importance of how panels and lenses form the overall visuals of a VR headset. With the arrow, you simply want to retry all of your games just to find out how good they actually could look like. The arrow is without a doubt a must have for simmers that simply want to make their experiences as real as possible and that need to see the smallest details also in further distances when other headsets would only give them a blurry mess. But it's also a great buy for those enthusiasts who simply want a visual upgrade to the current headsets and enjoy Half-Life Alyx or other non-simming games and simply want VR to look as good as possible right now. However, it's not all just moonlight and roses. 
the audio solution feels like a compromise. It truly works, but consumers are already used to better built-in headphones like in the Valve Index or the Reverb G2. Also in terms of comfort, you can tell that Vario still did not have to face the wild west of the consumer market with users that would put the hardware to all kinds of unexpected tests. The head strap is very sophisticated, but might give users a few too many options for adjustment. But my major gripe with the head strap is that it's too small for really big head sizes. If you are in the market for a new headset and belong to the kind of VR enthusiast that in general would be willing to pay 2K to simply get the best visuals in VR right now, that are not compromised by any god rays and offer absolutely stunning clarity from edge to edge, you absolutely have my blessing to go forward and order the Aero. Just be aware of the fact that like with most headsets, also the Aero is not without its compromises. And this concludes the full MRTV review of the Vario Aero. I'm very glad that Vario took the plunge into consumer VR and with a headset like this one, they will for sure make a splash. This is the headset that so many people have been waiting for and now it's here. PC VR is alive and kicking and with the Aero, we have a new frontrunner in the race to the top. For my full written review of the Aero with upgrade recommendations from all the current headsets, simply go to mrtv.co. I really hope that with this review, I could answer a lot of questions that you had regarding the Vario Aero and that I actually did provide a value to you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming reviews, absolutely subscribe to this channel and also click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And now, of course, I want to hear from you. Are you going to pick up the Vario Aero? Please do let me know in the comment section and of course, all the links directly to the device you're going to find down in the comment section and as a pinned comment. That's everything that I have for you right now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.